Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be talking about domain 4, that is manage Azure identities and governance. So let's dive in. So Azure AD role-based access control, how you can manage your subscriptions and governance. Let's see what all things that are part of this domain, right? So Azure Active Directory, right? So Azure Active Directory is a Microsoft cloud-based identity and access management service, which helps your employees sign in and access resources in. So sign in is authentication, access resources is authorization, right? That is what exactly will do. Azure Active Directory is nothing but it's an identity and access management, identity and access management service provided by Azure, right? And we'll call it as Azure Active Directory or AAD. External resources such as Microsoft Office 365, Azure Portal and thousands of other SaaS applications, we can use Azure AD to authenticate and authorize. Internal resources such as apps on your corporate network and internet can also, you can leverage Azure Active Directory for authentication and authorization for your internal applications that are running on your corporate private network that is called intranet along with any cloud apps developed by your own organization that is running on azure right so that is what basically your azure active directory will do correct so concept of there are few things there are few major things that you need to understand few keywords lingos that are connected to azure ad identity anything that can be authenticated it can be user, a username, a password, an application, or other services that requires authentication. It's called as an identity. Account is identity with data associated. So with this identity, you are mentioning the name of this particular identity is Kumar Mangalam. He lives in this particular place. Phone number is this and whatnot, right? Then that's called an account. Azure AD account. Identity created by Azure AD, right? So in Azure AD, if you have created an identity, then that is called an Azure AD account. But if you have moved user from your on-premises to Azure AD, that is called as managed account. So that is the lingo that we will use or on-premises users. That's what we'll use, okay? Azure tenant an instance of Azure AD created when an organization signs up for an Azure cloud service subscription. In the back end, how tenants looks like, what is the concept of Azure tenant? I told you guys when I was discussing about Azure AD, right? Azure AD directory. Each Azure tenant has a dedicated and trusted Azure Active Directory service or instance, which will in turn help this Azure AD tenant to perform or to manage these two tasks, that is authentication and authorization. Right, it's a service that will be connected to your Azure Active Directory tenant. User subscriptions to pay for Azure Cloud services that you are using, the costing will happen on this particular subscription, which is basically nothing but it's a cost management and uh, governance and compliance management resource also. You can take it as like that also, but majorly on costing purpose, we will use the subscription. That is where we will perform the cost analysis and all those things which I also showed you guys how to do that, right? So here role-based access control helps you to manage who has access to Azure resources, what they can do with those resources and what areas they can have access to. Can you guys let me know in the back end by using what thing this role-based access control will work in the back end? In complete Azure architecture, I showed it to you guys and we have discussed very much thoroughly on that. Azure architecture, what is that thing which role-based access control will leverage to do what it exactly does? So there is something called resource providers, right? And at resource providers level, you can make sure for this particular RBAC role, I am just going to allow this particular RBAC role to access these resources and these providers, this is what it is. This is what it is referring to. It is actually di directly referring to those resource providers, right? So in Azure architecture, resource providers are those 
services or are those parts of that architecture which your role based access control will leverage to make sure you are going to give access to few azure resources and what all things that they can do on that particular resource right azure rbac is an authorization system built on azure resource manager right which is basically your orchestrator right and they call it as jarvis right that provides fine grained access management of cloud resources by leveraging something called as resource providers all right now conditional access this conditional access but this is basically part of your az500 course but still let's see what is conditional access so by using azure ad you can define something called as conditional access conditional access is a tool that is used by azure active directory that brings signals together to make decision and enforce organizational policy so what you can do you can make sure if this particular user is trying to access then you can let them allow access deny access or you can make sure they need mfa or they don't need mfa you can enforce to change their password at that particular point of time you can deny the access or you can limit that particular user access so when we are talking about if then you have these many circumstances where you can mention if right so if some unmanaged device is being detected what you want right this is what you want these all things that you can tell azure to do right so if there is an anonymous client that is trying to connect to your network or to your virtual machine or to your azure active directory or to your network itself right then what you want them to do do you want to deny access you can deny the access so that is how this conditional access basically works right using conditional access policies you can apply the right access controls when needed to keep your organization secure and stay out of users way when not needed right so these are the ifs or the kind of situations that can happen and accordingly you can tell azure ad to act and that is why it is called as conditional access so you are setting up a condition if this happens then what you have to do and azure ad will automatically do it which is called as azure ad conditional access right azure ad multi factor authentication we know that what exactly it is it will make sure like you are authenticating twice what all things can happen you can mention like if account is getting locked out you can see up here account lockout and you can unlock the account if it is like the multi factor authentic authentication is not working like in the same way right other things are there but majorly multi factor authentication is used for two or more types of authentication should happen while authenticating yourself right help safeguard access to data and applications while maintaining simplicity of users users can register themselves for both self service password reset and azure ad mfa in one step to simplify the onboarding experience right admin can define what forms of secondary authentication can be used i showed it to you guys how we can do that right self service password reset you will enable users for self service password reset the major thing that we need to know uh, i am not going to discuss on this because we have seen it thoroughly we know what is self service password reset but the main thing what we have to do if we are enabling self service password sspr for this user then this user should be assigned with a azure premium p2 license and location of this user has to be updated okay if any one of these two will not be there sspr will not get activated keep that in mind okay azure active directory premium p2 license should be there right and at least premium p1 license should be there and location should be updated if this is not updated and rest of the things are in place sspr will not work so keep that in mind okay so manage subscriptions and governance so we know that there is something called management groups which will be used to manage your subscription subscriptions inside the subscriptions you have your resource group subscriptions are your can be used as your costing center where you can perform your cost analysis on resources that are inside subscription one subscription can have multiple resource group right and inside the resource group in turn you will have your resources so this is how the architecture looks like when we are talking about the 
hierarchy of uh, different management services that we have in our azure right so subscriptions is a logical unit of azure service that are linked to an azure account right in order to take advantage of azure based cloud service you must have a subscription and it serves as a single billing unit for azure resources that is created or used inside that particular account few types of subscriptions are free pay as you go enterprise student apart from that there are csp subscription and uh, i think there are more types of subscriptions also but these are few types of subscriptions right resource group is a logical collection of resources the resource group stores metadata about the resources right that is why you have to mention the location where you are creating the resource group location so if you are updating the location basically you are telling azure this is where you should keep the metadata that is related to azure resource group metadata is nothing but it's data about data it provides a way to monitor control access provision and manage to bill for collections of assets or resources that are being used by a client so you can monitor them you can control access you can give access by using iam right identity and access management on the left side of the screen second option you can provision resources inside the resource group right by using maybe arm template or maybe maybe powershell maybe azure portal you can manage the billings also in on top of this particular azure resource group by using cost analysis budgeting and all the other things azure management groups we know that management group why a management group is being used management group will be used to manage your number of subscriptions if you have a lot of subscriptions you can manage your subscriptions by using something called management group Azure management group provides a level of scope above subscriptions you organize subscriptions into containers like management groups and apply your governance conditions to the management group governance conditions to the management group which is nothing but policies right which is policies and cost analysis intern budgets all these things can be done right by using management groups so if you are applying it on root management group you don't have to worry about anything else it will get applied on everything if you want to apply it on it production it will get applied to all these subscriptions that are inside this production this will not get affected with that right so that is what it will do azure blueprints we haven't discussed this is part of majorly your aged 303 304 course but azure blueprints is collection of so let's say this is your subscription right on this particular subscription i have created few role based access control rules right i have applied few policies right and i have applied i have used an arm template to deploy resources inside this particular subscription now you want to create so let's say this is your test subscription now you have to create a dev subscription dev subscription and you want the same replica of the resources the policies and the type of roles that you have created i'm talking about custom roles okay so what you can do is like you can create a service you can use a service called azure blueprints and you can mention what all role based access controls roles that you want to keep inside that blueprint what you can see here what all policies that you want to keep inside that particular blueprint like this and the different arm templates so you will pack them into something called azure blueprints and then you can use this blueprint to apply it directly on this dev subscription and automatically your resources will get created by leveraging this arm template your policies will get created and you can you are working on your governance part and your roles will automatically get created the custom roles and then you can actually assign people those custom roles so basically it is automating at a very high level arm template only resources policies at governance level role based access control you are going to create multiple roles which you are going to assign to the people so you are not going to do all these things again you just pack it under something called azure blueprint and then apply it directly on a different subscription everything will come up as it is what it was there in the test subscription 
I think this should be pretty much clear with you guys, right? So that is something there. It will not get asked in your 104 examination, but still I am just uh, discussing it through. We know what is Azure policy. We'll create a policy. It's like a rule that we are going to apply on our subscription or on my management group or on resource group or on our resources also. Azure policy is the service that you use to create, assign, and manage policies. These policies enforce rules on resources so that resources stay compliant with your corporate standards and service level agreements. So this is what basically policy does, right? There is a sample question. So what is the question? A company has set up an active directory tenant called and an Azure subscription. Okay. They want to give a set of developers the ability to create Azure logic apps. They decided to create an Azure AD group called as S dev. Okay. You need to ensure that the right role is allocated to the group so that the members can create Azure logic apps. You decide to provide the storage account contributor role to the group. Would this solution fulfill the requirement? Can you assign this storage account contributor role onto this particular group that is called SDEV? You cannot assign it, right? So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And, 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 and if in case you missed upon anything or if you could not understand anything from what our trainers explained, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on Microsoft Azure Admin Certification for Beginners along with some question and answers. Under this class, you'll be learning about who should learn Azure Cloud and why. We'll be learning about Azure Certification Roadmap for Beginners and a lot of demos about Azure Core Services, more than 30 plus hands-on labs and whatnot. And if you want to register for this free class, then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash AZ10402. So just now, let me just give you a demo for the same. All right, so what you have to do is just open your browser and type k21academy.com forward slash az10402. After that, you'll be seeing a page like this. You just have to click on book your seats now. And after that, just select an event date when you're available, add your name, add your email address, add your phone number and click on yes, save my seats now. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of link on the extreme right. Just save that link, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in this class. Till then, take care and keep learning.